Hi Flutus, how are you holding up? Today I would like to show you the second sound exercise that I practice on a daily basis. This follows my first exercise. The image that you're creating in your head is as if you're dropping a pebble into a lake and watching the ripple of the sound travel out. It's a still focused and beautiful sound that connects the notes. The exercise is based on a triad, a fifth and an octave. If you're a beginner or an intermediate student, you can start on the bottom note of the flute, play a fifth above and then an octave above the first note that you started on. If you're more advanced, play the fundamental note, the fifth above, and then a major sixth above that, back down to the fifth. When you're playing the exercise, try to really have a sense of the intonation. If we hear in tune when we're playing, there's a much better chance that we'll be playing in tune. So here's the beginning of the exercise. Think one, two, three, four. Then we move up a semitone. Also imagine an alpine horn traveling across the mountains. Move up a semitone. really have the most possible connection between the notes as if the phrase that you're playing is just one note changing pitch and play it at a speed that's comfortable for you obviously it's a slow movement exercise you give yourself enough breath to be able to play expressively as if you're playing a slow movement <laughs> If you don't like it, do it again. And up a semitone. Up a semitone again. Make the third note your destination and then taper off to the fourth note. Really phrase it like it's a beautiful piece of music. Notice that the transition between the notes should not be jerky, not this. The note is like it's made out of a piece of rubber that you're stretching to change the pitch. So when you change notes, you need to just absolutely focus that the breath is still blowing clearly and smoothly between the notes in the middle of the transition. I like to almost imagine that I'm cementing the change in the note with a tiny little bit of vibrato, which really equates to a little bit more support as you're changing notes. And relax and enjoy it.
the reason we do this exercise, it's really a training for when we play a phrase, playing in a connected way between notes of different intervals. Try to play these phrases and really listen to whether your notes are connected or whether they're smooth, and whether you're actually playing in a way that's flowing freely from your body and your personality. You'll find that this exercise, if you do it up to the very top note that you can play on the flute, will really help you. So we keep going all the way up. Try not to move, move your lips too much. Use the, the connection and the support to change the sound. Obviously, we need to change the tension in the upper lip just a tiny little bit for the top and middle register. But really try to make the sound come from your diaphragm and don't use too much support on the throat. Don't cover the embouchure hole too much. It should be a third to half the hole and keep the flute reasonably low on your lips. You'll find that you have a lot of control over the sound if the flute is not too high on your lips. I like to feel instinctive and expressive when I'm doing these sound exercises. So only really repeat a particular phrase if you're not happy with it. These exercises that I'm giving you are very good training for your ear, so do really try to play in tune. Enjoy your practice, particularly in this isolated time, I look forward to sharing some more ideas with you soon. Thanks for listening to me. Take care.